Okay, so concentration time graph. Sometimes you're not, you're not going to be given a statement about things. You're going to be given a graph. A graph is just one way of representing information. And as a scientist or as a student who's doing science, you should be able to interpret graphs and make sense out of them. Now, a question, a possible question out of a concentration time graph that could come here is as follows. In fact, before I go there, let me just help you interpret it a little bit. So you see that the concentration is on the y-axis in terms of mole per cubic decimeters. Then you have time in terms of seconds on the x-axis as the independent variable. So from t0, from t0, from t0, from t0 to t1, you can see that the reaction, whatever it is, is at equilibrium. And from T, you can see that there's a disturbance on the equilibrium and a new equilibrium is reached at this point. And how do we know that? How do we know that a new equilibrium is reached at this point? We know that because from this point, Maybe let's call it Tx because we don't know what it is. From this point up until this point, this point, the concentration, the concentration of reactants and products is not changing. That concentration is not changing. It is constant. That is one of the conditions of the, a dynamic equilibrium is that the concentration over time, over a period of time, the concentration of the reactants and products will remain constant when the reaction is at equilibrium over a period of time. And as you can see, it is a straight line indicating that the concentration is not changing. It, so there's a new equilibrium here. So here, at this point, going on the other side, this is an old equilibrium, and then there's a change. With that change, you see that the amount of ammonia is, is increased while the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen is decreased to reach a new equilibrium. So, by inspection, these are the first things that you should be able to pick up from your graph before you can answer any question. Now, let's look at the possible questions that could come out of a graph like this. So, a question could come. A question could come, and that question could be, find Kc between, between T0 and T1. So, which means that they are, they are interested in the equilibrium constant between T0 and T1. And it, as we've already discussed, between T0 and T1, the reaction is at equilibrium. Now, how do we do that? What we can do is, first of all, we need to find out what the reaction is. We need to find out what the reaction is. And this is the Haber process reaction, which is used in the production of ammonia. Ammonia is used in fertilizers as a primary ingredient. It's a very interesting stuff. But before we get carried away with what happens with the Haber process, let's look at the chemical equation for this reaction. So you'll have nitrogen, which is a gas, that reacts with hydrogen in a reversible reaction to give you ammonia. So we have to balance it. We have to balance it. So we have how many... Nitrogen is two this side, we can have two here, but down we have six, but we have only two, we can put three here to balance it. So we have a balanced chemical reaction. So in this case, we just had to balance it for as a rule of thumb. But we don't we're not actually gonna need this. In fact, we will need them when we do the KC expression because the KC expression for us to find KC. We need to know what the KC expression is. What the KC expression is. 
So is is the concentration of products, which is ammonia squared because of the two here as a coefficient, divided by the product of the concentration of the reactant. And it will be cubed here. Now, what is the concentration? What is the concentration of the reactants? What is the concentration of the reactants? The concentration of the reactants, now we know what they are. So N2, we can read it from the graph while it's at equilibrium will be 0 0.4 mole per dm3, right? And then we look at the concentration of hydrogen. Concentration of hydrogen, we will have 0 0.1 mole per dm3. And then we look at the concentration of the product, which is ammonia. We will have 0 0.6 mole per dm3. Sometimes they can write it as molarity. So one, one molarity is equal to one mole per dm3. So these are just the units for concentration. So when you see them, don't be confused. Okay, so since we know this, we've read them off the graph, we didn't have to draw a table because we know the values of the concentration. So sometimes sometimes this could be the moles here. And if they are moles here, you'll have to know the volume so that you calculate the concentration. So now as you as you continue to calculate the value of your Kc, you will have you will have you just have to substitute what you have here. So for products you'll have 0 0.6 squared divide by 0 0.1 and 0 0.4 so so for 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 nitrogen you have 0 0.1 for nitrogen you have 0 0.4 actually 0 0.4 and for hydrogen you have 0 0.1 and then you'll have your cube here and then you punch the calculator quickly. So when you punch the calculator, the answer becomes nine. Answer becomes nine exponent three. So it's a very huge value. That's it.